In 1949, 31-year-old Chung Kaija, also known as Kai Chia Chang, declined his British mentor to stay and return to China. For the needs of his motherland, he changed his research direction four times in ten years. He said, as long as it is for the national interest, I can do anything. From participating in the development of the atomic bomb to participating in the decision-making of more than 30 nuclear tests, he devoted all his efforts to China's nuclear weapon research and nuclear testing. The core of the reason why China is one of the five permanent members of the United Nations is that it has a powerful nuclear armed force. There is one kind of security that is the most reliable in the world, and that is to let the enemy retreat because of difficulties. This famous saying comes from Kai Chia Chang. So, for this ambitious goal, what outstanding contributions did he make? In today's video, let's talk about the story of this Chinese hero. Okay, let's get started. Kai Chia Chang was born in Suzhou, China in 1918. He has been eager to learn since he was a child, and he is particularly interested in physics and wanted to design a perpetual motion machine when he was in junior high school. In 1937, Kai Chia Chang received the admission notices from Shanghai University and Zhujiang University at the same time. After careful consideration, he chose the physics department of Zhujiang University. After graduating, Kai Chia Chang stayed at Zhujiang University to teach. In 1944, he wrote a paper on protons. British scientist Joseph Needham read it and passed it on to Paul Dirac. However, Dirac felt that the subject of the paper was not meaningful, so the paper was not published. Interestingly, the experimental conclusion of the 1979 Nobel Prize in Physics is consistent with the results of Kai Chia Cheng's paper. However, Needham did not hide this genius, he introduced Kai Chia Cheng to Max Born. In August 1946, Chung went to England to start research on the most cutting edge topics in physics. If he does not return to China at this point, he will definitely achieve great achievements and prestige abroad. However, after receiving his PhD, Chung successfully entered the British Royal Research Institute as a researcher, but he was not happy. Why? Because China was poor and weak at that time, Cheng suffered from the lack of a stable research environment in China. Afterwards, as soon as the People's Republic of China was founded, he returned to the motherland in August 1950, regardless of his mentor Born's repeated persuasion. After returning to China, Chung successively taught in Zhujiang University and Nanjing University, and made outstanding contributions to the research and development of Chinese physics. So how did he suddenly have an intersection with the atomic bomb? During the Korean War, MacArthur and Truman successively threatened China with atomic bombs. China understands that only by possessing nuclear weapons can China not be bullied. In the 1950s, in order to win over China to become its vassal, the Soviet Union provided China with some information and materials for nuclear weapons research. But afterwards, we all know that the Soviet Union withdrew all the experts, which brought China's nuclear weapons development to a standstill. In 1960, the president of Nanjing University suddenly gave Chang a transfer order. The confused Cheng came to Beijing and found out that he had been transferred to the Institute of Nuclear Weapons as the deputy director, and he is mainly responsible for the detonation and explosive yield of atomic bombs. Since then, Kai Chia Cheng has disappeared from the global physics community. In 1962, China made a breakthrough in the development of the atomic bomb. Cheng told his family, I want to travel far away. Afterwards, he came to the Vastlop Norgobi and served as the technical director of the atomic bomb test explosion. The radioactive pollution of the atomic bomb is too serious, so it can only be carried out in the sparsely populated Gobi Desert. The traffic in Lop Nor is very inconvenient, so everyone can only live in their tents first. When the wind is strong, their tents are also easily blown away. Although there is a small river next to the residence, the heavy metals in the water exceed the standard and cannot be used. When there is a shortage of water, experts simply cannot wash their faces for several days. At work, Chang is a very serious person. When China's first atomic bomb was tested, it was installed on top of a 102-meter-high iron tower. 
This plan was determined by Chang. The original plan was to conduct a test explosion by airdrop, but Chung Kaija firmly rejected this plan. On the one hand, it is because the atomic bombs were dropped erratically, and they had to be thrown within a certain range so that the surrounding instruments could measure them accurately. But at that time, China's aircraft were lagging behind, and if the throw was not accurate, the explosive yield could not be measured well. On the other hand, if you want to throw it accurately, the plane must control its speed and altitude. When the atomic bomb is the most powerful, it will explode in the air, and the plane may not have time to fly out of the danger zone. Therefore, after careful calculation, Cheng determined the plan of the 102-meter iron tower. At that time, there were more than 1,700 instruments for measuring the power of the atomic bomb, all of which were connected by cables laid in shallow trenches. When Cheng inspected the test site, he clearly proposed to cover all the cables with fine sand. Because he knows that nuclear radiation has a great impact on the metal core, if the cable is exposed like this, the final data will definitely be inaccurate. Therefore, when the first atomic bomb was tested, more than 1,700 instruments were all activated at the same time, and the data accuracy rate was 97%. The accuracy rate of the first nuclear test data of the United States, the Soviet Union, Britain, and France did not even reach 50%. At 3 p.m. on October 16, 1964, a huge mushroom cloud rose into the sky. Subsequently, after more than 600 days and nights of hard work, on December 28, 1966, China's first hydrogen bomb was successfully tested. But Chang was not satisfied with what he had achieved. After that, he proposed an underground nuclear test. The nuclear pollution caused by the open-air test of the atomic bomb is very serious, and it is easy for the enemy to collect the data of China's nuclear test. Therefore, the underground test of nuclear weapons is a safer and more confidential method. On October 14, 1978, China's first underground shaft nuclear test led by Chang was successful. In 1990, China completely abandoned atmospheric nuclear testing, and all nuclear weapons testing was transferred underground. In 1977, Cheng became the deputy commander of the base, and he presided over most of China's nuclear weapons tests. Under his command, China's nuclear force has developed into a powerful armed force that would frighten any enemy. On July 29, 1996, China announced a moratorium on nuclear testing. Why is that? Because under the leadership of Chang, China has obtained enough nuclear test data, and in the future, it can complete the design, test and finalization of new weapons through computer simulation. This is also an important symbol of a nuclear power. In 1999, Kai Chia Chang was awarded the supreme honor of China's two bombs and one satellite medal. By the way, the Two Bombs in One Satellite project was a major achievement after the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949. The success of this early nuclear and space project laid the foundation for developing cutting-edge science and technology for China's national defense. The spirit of Two Bombs in One Satellite, featuring patriotism, dedication, hard work and the courage to scale new heights in science and technology, is still admired across China. In 2018, Chang passed away in Beijing at the age of 101. His name was once the top secret in China. Now, his name will forever be remembered in every Chinese heart. Okay, thanks for your listening, see you next time.